Animals on factory farms are viewed strictly as commodities. Their comfort and health is not a prerogative because, like all things, they have an end. And that end comes quite quickly on these farms. They are not able to act as nature intended. Most of these animals will never see the sun or a real blade of grass in their life. Instead, they are kept in battery cages, metal crates, or crammed into filthy feedlots. Because of the massive amounts of animals in such crammed environments, many animals develop abnormal behavior and physical deformities. Pigs are extremely intelligent animals, more intelligent than dogs, and they need space to express their curiosity. However, on most factory farms, pigs are kept in metal gated areas so small that they cannot even turn around. Michael Pollan, professor of science and environmental journalism at the University of California, Berkeley, and author of The Omnivore's Dilemma, describes pig confinement operations as the following. Explain how these animal operations work. Well, a pig confinement operation is a, uh, is a pretty hellish place. Um, they are, you know, tens of thousands of animals um, kept jammed together. Um, the animals are so close together that they have to snip their tails off because the animals are so neurotic. I mean, pigs are very intelligent. They're smarter than dogs. That they will nip at each other's tails. They've been weaned so early that they have this sucking desire, and so they take it out on the, um, on, on the tails of the animal right in front of them. So they snip the tails off, um, not to stop the procedure, but to make it so painful that animals will avoid having their tails bitten, uh, just to make them raw and painful. They administer um, antibiotics to these animals on a regular basis because they could not survive without them. And the waste uh, goes down directly below the animals into this giant cesspool that's flushed two or three times a day um, out. And um, I mean, they're just, you know, they're incubators for disease. Um, the sows remain in crates their whole lives so they can be conveniently inseminated and, and they have their babies right there in their crates. Um, you know, to go to one of these places is to stop eating industrial pork, basically. I mean, if we could, if we could see into this industrial uh, meat production, it, it would change the way most of us eat. Broilers, or chickens raised for meat, are raised in sheds called grower sheds. A typical shed houses up to 20,000 chickens. Many of these sheds are completely dark, and because of the crowded environment, chickens are unable to go about natural behavior such as scratching and foraging for food. The minimum space required to raise a broiler chicken is one half square foot per bird. However, the National Chicken Council brags that with a traditional shed that would hold 20,000 birds, that would have 16,000 square feet, which would allow for a spacious eight tenths of a square foot per bird. Today, poultry are raised and slaughtered in half the time it took 50 years ago, but are twice as big. Because chickens have been selectively bred to grow at such a rapid pace, chickens' bones and internal organs cannot keep up with their muscle growth. Many broiler chickens cannot even walk because of the immense amount of weight they carry around. Antibiotics are also administered to chickens on a regular basis in their feed. However, when chickens ingest a steady stream of antibiotics, bacteria can mutate and eventually become immune to antibiotics. Today, 80% of all antibiotics in the United States are administered to livestock. That's uh, corn silage, high moisture corn, which is uh, the yellow kernels you see, and then we feed some byproducts, potato chips, uh, and a chocolate blend, um, which is uh, has some cocoa shells. Uh, uh, you see some M and M's uh, with it. Uh. At the beginning of the century, cattle were free to roam the rangeland and to eat grass like nature intended. But as the demand for cheap beef increased chiefly brought about by fast food companies, cattle were raised on feedlots, and fed an unnatural diet of grain and other byproducts which can include things like potato chips, bubble gum, and even other dead cows. Although most cattle are raised on feedlots, which are outside, many are overcrowded and stressful, and animals live in their own feces and urine. Cows are ruminants. Ruminants are mammals that ingest plant food, and soften it in their first stomach and then regurgitate the semi-digested food called cud and chew it again. Cows that live on feedlots are fed a diet that consists of mainly corn and soybeans. However, starch is extremely unhealthy for ruminants. Ruminant stomachs, unlike the highly acidic stomachs of humans, are pH neutral. When fed a diet of corn, cow stomachs can become very acidic. The result is a sort of cow acidosis. 
This condition can lead to diarrhea, ulcers, bloat, liver disease, and a general weakening of the immune system that leaves the animal vulnerable to everything from pneumonia to feedlot polio. Because of this, they are also pumped full of antibiotics and feed additives to combat illnesses that they develop. Regardless of their start, all livestock are sent to the same place in the end, a slaughterhouse. Although the Humane Slaughter Act was initiated in 1951, it is more than inefficient. Although this act requires that all animals are rendered insensible to pain by a single blow or gunshot, or an electrical, chemical, or other means that is rapid and effective, many animals are not properly knocked out before the slaughtering process begins. The USDA opposes the Humane Slaughter Act because enforcing it would mean slowing down production and therefore reducing profit. Therefore, many times, animals are improperly stunned before the slaughtering process begins. Animals are skinned, gutted, and boiled alive. In Slaughterhouse by Gail Eisenitz, multiple workers from multiple slaughterhouses admit to abusing animals or seeing abuse in their slaughterhouse. Dave Carney, a meat inspector, says the following. Quite often, uncooperative animals are beaten. They have prods poked in their faces and up their rectums. They have bones broken and eyeballs poked out. Additionally, poultry and rabbits are exempt from the Humane Slaughter Act. Former Tyson slaughterhouse worker Virgil Butler recounts his experiences as a sticker. I saw people bashing birds against the belt. I saw people stomping birds to death. I saw them bouncing them against the wall. I saw them throw them into a dumpster live where the DOAs go. They're supposed to everything be dead when it goes in there. I saw people pull chickens' legs off, throw them in the floor, let them lay there all night long. I saw people run over chickens with forklifts. I've seen chickens frozen to the belt. I've seen them frozen to the sides of cages. Just, if you could imagine it, and it's horrible, I've seen it happen. 